All right, in this video, we are going to graph some exponential functions such as these. So the first thing we're going to do is choose our x values. And uh, we can just go ahead and always use negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2 for the x values. For the y values, at first, I'm only going to use the parent function. See the 1 fourth here? So uh, I'm going to ignore the plus 3 and the minus 1 for right now. I'm going to imagine that all we have is y equals uh, 1 fourth to the x power. All right, and that's what we'll use for the y values. Um, for our final answer, we will do some transformations according to the plus 3 and the minus 1. But for now, um, so one fourth to the x power. So that means we are doing, uh, you know what, let me zoom in. For now, we are doing one fourth to the negative two power, because that's x. And we're doing one fourth to the negative one power. We're doing one fourth to the zero power. We're doing one fourth to the one power. And we're doing one fourth squared. Um, I'm going to start from the bottom because that's usually more direct and straightforward. Um, if I square this, 1 squared is 1, and 4 squared is 16, so I have 1 16th. Uh, anything to the 1 power is just itself, so this is still 1 fourth. Anything to the 0 power is 1, so that will just be a 1. Now watch, the rest of these, um, these other two are just going to be reciprocals of these. So this is just going to be 4, because the reciprocal of 1 fourth. And this will simply be 16, the reciprocal of 1 16th. And that makes sense, because if I have a fraction and a negative exponent, all you do is you do the reciprocal, and then you make it a positive exponent. So of course it's 16. All right, but if you already have these, you can just do the reciprocal. So we're ready to plot these values on the graph. These are not the final answers, so I will not connect them. So I have negative 2 comma 16. So that's clearly going to be off the chart, but I'm just going to estimate. All right, so the, here's negative 2, so this is 10. So I'm going to estimate that 16 would be about there. Anyway, um, negative 1 comma 4 is here, 0 comma 1 right there. And then we've got 1 comma 1 fourth. So that's already very small. By the time we get to 2, we're at 1 16th. 1 16th is so small that um, it's really going to appear to be on the x-axis. But just 1 16th up. Use your imagination. Okay. Now, a parent function like this uh, you can see the, cu the curve sort of forming. If I were to connect these, it would swoop down like this and flatten out and form an asymptote at the x-axis. Now it's time to talk about these transformations, though. Okay. Let me go back to this. So this plus 3 is going to move the graph up 3. This minus 1 it's going to do the opposite of what it looks like, um, and it, it will move us to the right one. All right, so this is your up-down number, and this will be a left-right number. But negative is actually to the right. So we're going to go right one and up three with each of these points. All right, so let's do that. Okay, so right one and up three. Okay, right one and up three. Right one, up three. Right one, up three. <clears throat> Even this one, I'll do my best here. Right one, up three <clears throat> would be about there. Now let's talk about the asymptote. The asymptote was this horizontal line at the x-axis. Um, if I move the graph up 3, that's going to give me a new asymptote. Uh, and the new asymptote is at 3. So 
So the new asymptote will be here at um, y equals 3. So um, now I'm going to try to draw my curve, which should pass through these points and approach the asymptote. All right, so your curve should look something like this. And uh, let's go ahead and put arrows on the end to show that it keeps going forever in these directions. All right, that is it for number one. Let's go ahead and slide over and look at problem number two, which we will do in the exact same way. Um, so again, we will use the same x values that we always use, which will be negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. Just like before, we're going to start off by looking at the parent function. See that 2? I'm going to ignore the 3, and I'm going to ignore the minus 4 for now. So for now, I'm just going to be looking at 2 to the x power, like y equals 2 to the x power. All right? So if y equals 2 to the x power, and these are my x's, that means I'm doing 2 to the negative 2 power, 2 to the negative 1 power, 2 to the 0 power, 2 to the 1 power, and 2 squared. And uh, so I'm going to get 4. 2 to the 1 power is just 2. Anything to the 0 power is 1. And now these two will just be the reciprocals of these two. So this will be 1 half, and this will be 1 fourth. OK, so um, those are my x's and y's. Now, I'm not going to actually plot these points yet. Because there's something different about this problem. Um, this 3 uh, the co is a coefficient in the front. We call it the a value because the model goes like this, a times b to the x power. All right, so 2 is the base, but uh, we have an a value this time. Last time, the a value was 1, so we didn't really have to do anything about it. Um, when you have an a value that is not 1, in this case it is 3, uh, that's when you're going to make a new y column. So I'm going to have to erase my work here, unfortunately. It's in the way. And I'm going to have to make a brand new y column. And the new y column is going to be the a value times all the y's. So 3 times y. So if I multiply all these by 3, that's going to give me 3 fourths, 3 halves, 3, 6, and 12. So that's my new y column. Uh, just to be clear, um, 3 times 1 fourth, for example, uh, you can just think of this as 3 over 1 times 1 over 4. I'm just multiplying straight across. 3 times 1 is 3. 1 times 4 is 4. That's where I'm getting 3 fourths from. So now that we have a new y column, we can disregard the old y column. So these are the x's and y's that I will be plotting. Um, it might be useful to turn these into decimals. Uh, 3 fourths is 0.75. So that's you know a little bit less than one. Three over two is one and a half. Okay, that will just help us with the graphing. So let's go ahead and plot these points, uh, but we will not connect them. Is the only thing. So I have negative two and then comma three fourths. So negative two and three fourths should be about right there. And I have negative 1 and 1.5. So here's negative 1 and 1.5 would be about there. 0, 0,3 is here. 1, 6 is right here. And finally, 2, 12 
which is a little bit off the graph, but I'm just going to estimate. It'd be about there. All right, I'm not going to connect these points because there's still one thing I have not done. I haven't done anything with the uh, minus 4. Now, this is going to be a transformation to the right by 4. Right 4. All right, anything in this position is a left-right motion, but it's the opposite of what you would think. So negative sends you to the right. So I'm just going to take each one of these dots and move them to the right by 4. Okay, so that's pretty good. Because we moved this to the right, but we did not move it up or down, the asymptote is not actually going to change. The x-axis is still going to be the horizontal asymptote. So I'm going to draw this graph approaching the x-axis. All right, so your graph should look something like this. And uh, we'll go ahead and put some arrows on here to show that it continues in this way forever. So that's it for problem number two. All right, problem number three just wants a little extra information about problem number one. Uh, the domain is pretty easy. Remember, the domain is just how far uh, any graph goes from left to right. And this one goes left forever and right forever. So that's going to be negative infinity to positive infinity. Now, the range will not be negative infinity to positive infinity. Uh, this graph goes up forever, so that's positive infinity, but it does not go down forever. It levels out and approaches the asymptote that's here at 3. So when you write the range, you always want to write it from bottom to top. And this one goes from 3 to infinity, bottom to top. So the range is from 3 to infinity. Now, infinity always gets a round parenthesis, but sometimes we have a round parenthesis here, and sometimes we have a square bracket. Which is it going to be? Well, uh, parentheses mean not including that endpoint. And a square bracket means that the uh, set includes the endpoint. Well, in this case, this 3 represents the horizontal asymptote. So the graph gets closer and closer and closer to this asymptote. But in reality, it never gets there. All right? This function never will have a, a value of 3. It kind of looks at like it touches when you look at the graph because ink has thickness. Um, so you have to use your imagination to understand that when you have an asymptote like this, it's getting closer and closer and closer, but it never gets there. Um, so we cannot include the 3, so we will use parentheses on the left and the right. Okay, now the horizontal asymptote, uh, we keep talking about how it's at 3, but the, uh, the actual equation of the horizontal asymptote would formally be y equals 3. That's the equation of the horizontal asymptote. All right, so that is it for problem number three. And uh, that'll be the end of this video. We'll pick up from here. Um, the next video will include problems like this, where we can describe the transformations um, based on these equations.